Stand back, I'm going in. We are living in the future. Just 30 years ago, the idea of using screens to talk to anyone around the world was the realm of science fiction. Today, we do it all the time to talk to our friends and family using Skype or FaceTime. But using these technologies is not quite as good as being in the same room as the person you are talking to. We get distracted by other people and the things near us. And important bits of body language go unnoticed. So you see, using a video call is not quite as good as being in the same room, lacking something fundamental found in face-to-face -face interaction. But we are not that far away from being able to feel like we are present somewhere that we are not, and feel connected to people that are distant on a level that is not possible with current technology. Imagine we had remote mobile versions of ourselves that would allow us to explore the world and communicate with people in a way that is easy and accessible for everyone. A social robot avatar like the one I'm using to talk to you today, is the technology that I believe can get us there. Not only that, it can help us push towards the science fiction ideal of having helpful, human-like robots, such as C-3PO, be part of our everyday lives. As a child, I couldn't get enough of science fiction stories filled with robots, and I decided when I grew up, I wanted to build them. Now. I work in Bristol Robotics Laboratory, where we work to make the science fiction dreams of my childhood a reality. On the Being There project, we are working to develop and test this social robot avatar system, where the voice you hear and the actions you see are mine. I can see you all through cameras in the robot's eyes, and my head and arm movements are being tracked, so the robot is copying my gestures. The robot is acting as me, and I feel like I'm present where the robot is standing. So I can talk with you all, wave, and feel like I'm on the center of stage, even though I'm really over there. <laughs> Likewise, you can see my movements, respond to me, and feel like I am center of the stage. The ultimate goal of the Being There project is to tackle a real human issue, social isolation, where people can feel lonely and disconnected from the rest of the world due to a lack of human contact. One reason this can happen is for people who struggle with social interactions, such as those with Asperger's or autism. For them, everyday situations, such as visiting a busy shop or meeting new people, can be overwhelming and difficult. Interacting via a robot avatar can help them overcome these difficulties, particularly if the robot is able to generate some of the needed social cues for them. Another reason people become isolated is because they have problems getting places. A robot avatar could allow them to be somewhere where they can talk to people and feel like they have a genuine human connection. What if a housebound grandparent could play remote games with their grandchildren, and the robot could be controlled in a way that was easy for them. To get to the point where we can tackle these issues, we have first been looking at what it means to interact via a robot avatar. Can it bridge the gap between video calls and face-to-face -face interaction? And in doing so, we have found some fascinating things that the robot can do that a phone or a screen simply cannot. To look at these things needs not only experts in human-robot interaction like me, but also experts in human-human interaction to ensure we look at human behavior in the right way. And that is one of the things I love about this project, is I get to work with psychologists to better design experiments that deal with the idiosyncrasies of human behavior. One of the things we've been looking at is that people are hardwired to notice physical motion even in their peripheral vision. So having the robot the gestures makes a big difference. 
people are more engaged with the robot. They have a better understanding and awareness of what the robot is, the controller is doing and saying. It is easy to see how this would be better communication technology for all of us. And maybe to attend an important business meeting on the other side of the world. But we see great potential for this system when talking to people for whom gesturing, engagement, and connectedness are of vital importance, such as young children or the elderly. So we could use a robot avatar for remote care or remote teaching. When thinking about the potential uses for this system, we have to be aware of what the effect is of having a robot appearance. We judge each other all the time, not only on what we say, but also on how we look. And it turns out we judge robot appearances too. So looking like a robot changes how the personality of the controller is perceived. For example, the cute, childlike looks of Bob here can make me seem more extroverted. Now, we aren't suggesting that we only talk via robot avatars to avoid these unconscious biases, but it's useful to think about what the important factors might be and how they can impact in specific situations, such as the first round of interviews for an important job or the testimony from vulnerable witnesses in court cases. While we've been looking at how people interact via a robot avatar, we've been learning important things about how best to communicate such as when and how to gesture, what behaviors and appearance are needed to project the correct impression. Learning from people, experts in human communication. We are just beginning to use this information to figure out how to make some of the robot's movements automatic. We need to know which behaviors to copy and how they can be triggered. This is a vital process to make this system accessible to everyone. It's particularly those who are socially isolated, who are unlikely to want or maybe even be able to stand around in front of a motion tracker waving their arms. So we need to adapt how the robot is controlled to suit them. This whole process of looking at how people interact with a robot avatar and figuring out how to add automatic behaviors is important for me and my dreams of the robots of science fiction. Oop, we've lost control. <laughs> I can, yeah, there we go, got it back again. The joys of modern technology and the stage time. It's important for me and my dreams of the robots of science fiction. Which gestures work and which don't? How do people process robot motion? Differently from human motion. How does the robot's appearance impact how people react to it? These are the sorts of questions we need to answer to push towards this science fiction ideal. Robots are the future. It's hard to imagine what the world would be like in the next 30 years. But having robots that we can work alongside, trust, and talk to like people seem likely to be a part of it. Robots are more than just industrial tools or toys. They have the potential to help us in our everyday lives, to help us stay connected, and to learn more about ourselves. Thank you.